ready? Yeah. Uh, Coach, if you don't mind starting us off by uh, chatting a little bit about what you saw this past weekend, yeah. and we'll open up for questions. I, I asked the team today to rank our performance one to 10. I had a lot of fours, I had a lot of fives, and I had a few sixes. And we just beat two top 10 teams with that level of performance. It's something to look at and go, hey, okay. They were not happy, but they competed, and that's what's important to me. So um, it's a good start, absolutely a good start. And to me, I, I would say we were probably at a five plus. So um, we had a really good practice today because they want to get better each week. And so I, I was pleased with it, even when we weren't. We don't want to be at our best yet, definitely not. So it was good wins. It was a good weekend. Okay. Patty, could you talk a little bit about what you liked most out of Kelly? And then I'm wondering just if you can kind of give us an idea of, as she's worked with Jen, what they've tried to focus on and, and really build up with her. Mm -hmm. um, I felt her really confident. And one thing that we have talked about as a team, is we can win without any one of you. Take any of you away, we're still gonna win. So you don't have to be the big hero. You don't have to pitch the perfect game. You don't have to hit a home run, don't over swing. You don't have to be that, that athlete. And I think some of them resonated to that. I think Kelly was really starting to hit stride towards like the end of January. So I was really excited to see her up against someone else. And she was cool and calm and money. It was really enjoyable to watch. I think Jen and Kelly kind of started from ground zero. I, Kelly hadn't really looked at numbers, didn't look at a lot of video, so there was a lot of exploring, a lot of learning. I think Kelly has learned a lot mm -hmm. from Jen Roach, and it's really starting to stick, and it's really starting to show in her pitches. So she was really sharp, and she was very, uh, I just felt her very confident. And I can't say that she has been extremely overconfident while she's been here. Mm -hmm because she kept, has to keep facing that lineup. So I think they were all relieved just to see somebody else. Was it video of herself or video of hitters or combination both. of both? Okay. combination of both. Gotcha, thanks. Jesse, then Bob. Patty, you referred to Cassidy last week as a power hitter when she really impressed. Uh, I know we, we saw that with the Grand Slam, but it seemed like she also had some timely hits mm -hmm. too. Just from her, what did you see from her last week that, and how important is that maybe for her confidence to, to hit the way she did? She is a really mature hitter for her age and I can hear her talk at practice and she's talking with the seniors and she's talking their language. So it's pretty cool to hear that. Um, she's got a good feel for the ball. Her swing is really, really pretty swing. She can cover the plate really well. There are times when she'll get a little outside of the zone, but um, I didn't feel nerves from her. I think she, and she was very timely offensively. She played really, really well enough to be named one of the uh, all tournament team members. So um, really proud of her. Patty, you said last week about Riley Ludlum that with one, one swing, she might be able to change something. Well, if we saw that happen, obviously. It just was it about her that gives you so much confidence? Um, she Anna doesn't know what she doesn't know. And I know she's a senior, but she doesn't know what she doesn't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like if you, if you know, sometimes when athletes know a lot, they just start letting their mind tick. She just gets up there and it was a big moment. And she was kind of surprised that we called on her. And I looked at her eyes, I'm like, oh no, oh no. Cause they were like me, like me. and she grabs that. And she starts to hyperventilate a little bit. So JT walked over and we were trying to get her to get her breathing down. And she just wanted to attack really early in the count. And she's got good long levers. She covers the plate really well. Um, a powerful swing. And even if she swings hard and even miss hits it, it's still gonna find a place. So that was um, really such a cool moment for her first at bat as a Sooner, which she'll never forget. Jan, 
hands in my chest. Hey, Patty, what, can you explain the obstruction uh, rule, please? No, I cannot. Okay, <laughs> I don't understand it. Either. I don't either. Uh, so I, I really. Uh, I'm not trying to get you. In no, I, I know. I, I, I can't. As soon as I saw Kenzie Hansen go down on her knees, I thought this is going to be called. Um, and there are ways that. Um, like the rule can be explained in another way where you'll say that that's not the issue and it's going after a ball, but it happened pretty immediately and there are no cameras out there and it was like a dead issue. I could not do anything about it. So it's almost like umpires see it. They see it early. They want to call it immediately without letting it register sometimes. And it's, the rule has changed. So I think we're all getting used to what this should look like still. Would you like to see it change some more? Of the yes, I would. Mm -hmm. What are you running into this weekend, this, this schedule that you're playing? Um, some good teams. I mean, um, Central Arkansas was a, a tournament team last year. Um, Lamar is a program on the rise. McNeese, if you all remember, had one of the most exciting super regionals. They were almost at the World Series. They, looking at their numbers, they have over 148 stolen bases last year, which is unheard of. Um, so it's going to be fast and furious. It's going to be a lot of short game slapping, runners in motion. Our defense is going to have to be on point. So they had uh, a good weekend this last weekend. I think they lost to Cal Berkeley um, their first game, but they're a very solid team. You talk a lot about Riley Boone kind of being under talked about in a way. Seems like, I was talking about JT earlier, it seems like her bunt that just dies has gotten somehow better this off season. But like, where else have you seen her continued development from where she was last year, which was a, a huge part of the lineup? She's got a lot of weapons, and I think people think she's a short game, like a slapper. So people play her in a little bit. And that's one thing that I love about her is she can mix you up a little bit make you feel like she's going to do something and then change. She did such a great job going opposite. She's a smart hitter. She's a really smart hitter. She knows the game very well. She um, kind of knows what we need. And some of these guys this weekend, they were over swinging big. They were trying to hit home runs. They were swinging at pitches out of the zone. Riley Boone was in lockdown mode. I felt her the whole weekend just in the moment, not trying to do anything more than she needed to do and she easily could have been an MVP of, of that weekend as well. You lie on the neighbor. Patty, you were excited about Cassidy on your way to Mexico and she impressed. We all saw the, the hitting, but whether it was this weekend or in the lead up in the offseason, what are the other pieces that have impressed you with her in being so ready so soon? Uh, maturity, I think. Um, the ability to ask upperclassmen and listen to upperclassmen versus I'm afraid I don't want to I don't want to show I don't know I mean she's really honest she will be our future captain it's very clear to me and I've even said it to her she's like yeah yeah I know I'm like okay well, let's do that then so um, it's just a different style that's unlike freshmen she's not scared of anything and uh, that, that shows yeah, Patty, you touched on it with the obstruction rule, but I wanted to ask, what what stood out to you about the new rules that have been in place this year, especially not only that one, but the timing and the uh, communication uh, devices? I think the communication devices work pretty well. Uh, they do speed up the game until yours doesn't work. <laughs> and then the umpire is like, hey, you know, that ball, I'm like, what are we supposed to do if it doesn't work? Um, the timing rules, I think people probably watching really like it, but it's pressure, it's stressful. Our hitters like to get themselves comfortable, and so we felt pressed in our first game without question. And that game against Duke is a, was a lot closer than what people thought. They're a very good team, and we could feel a little bit of pressure of trying to get in the box and me deliver the signal. and. Everything has to work really well. So at practice, you're seeing a 20 second clock every day on that scoreboard so we could work on it. I need them to understand that just because you're so-and-so doesn't mean they're not gonna come I mean, they're, they're waiting. 
They're way, they're counting it down. I wish that coaches could have this electronic or some kind of something where we could just cover our mouth and tell you what you're doing and away we go. If you want to pick up more time, we could really do it that way. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge. You can feel the energy a little bit different, like press, like pushed a little bit. And I didn't like that, but we're going to have to live with it. More Mason than Jenny. How you talked about Kelly, but how would you kind of assess Nicole and the rest of the coaching staff after the first weekend? Yeah, really good. I think our game against, um, I believe it was Duke, Nicole, no, Irvine Valley. No, not Irvine Valley. They don't have softball. Utah. <laughs> Utah Valley. Utah Valley. <laughs> Put you in the wayback machine. <laughs> Is that a junior college? Probably. <laughs> I do refer back to my junior college days at random times, like right now when you're all asking me to eat. <laughs> okay. There's what somebody the in question? California going, woohoo, we just um, got mentioned. Okay, pitchers. Um, Nicole started well. And um, and then I'm trying. Who started Duke? Kelly. Kelly. And then May started Washington. Um, I I thought Kelly threw really well this weekend. Really well. Peyton Monticelli came in and helped us with Washington. That was big. Carly Keeney came in and helped us. Carly Keeney helped us get into that Long Beach State game. The Long Beach State game was a trap game and I told them from the beginning and they don't even know what that means but now they do because we just had zero energy after that long evening. May um, needed to be a little more efficient against Washington. She gave up a couple walks, hit a couple batters. I mean we can't give that up. We can't give up free bases but um, I really loved the Washington game, how uh, Keeney came in and handled her business, and Kelly, that was a nice combination of those three, um, keeping us in the game and allowing us to get back into the lead. So uh, Katie had a little bit of struggle early. I think she showed a little bit of nerves, um, but we just got off the practice field and she threw wonderfully. So I. We talked about how fun it's going to be to see how good we can get. If what we, what in their minds was four, five, six style performance, what is an eight going to look like? And that's what they're really striving for right now. Patty, uh, news this afternoon about Jordy Ball's mm -hmm. injury. Um, obviously, you don't see a ton of players, all American types, that get injured like that. What's the impact in your mind just for the sport? Um, your, your emotions just with that news. Yeah, we were, I wasn't there, but my coaches were there scouting that game and, and they saw it and they knew that something wasn't gonna be good. But Jordy, I think she was walking around like you thought, well, maybe it's just a sprain or something, but she's so strong that her legs can maintain her kneecap. You know what I mean? Like when, when you get your ACL torn, you are you are in massive pain and you are not able to really walk. And so it was pretty amazing how, you know, she was just kind of moving around. Um, it's sad, it's horrible for anybody really. And, you know, Jordy went through injuries as a freshman and this, um, but I just, you know, you wish her well. She was sitting at the airport with our team, talking with our team, so, um, there's still the memories, the last memory they had was singing on stage with Toby Keith. And that's something that they will cherish, especially now forever. And so there's this bond that they still have because you're in the battlefields together. And everyone here wishes her well, wishes speedy recovery. I'm sure she'll come back knowing her better than she ever has. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.